Abby and Matthew were both childhood sweethearts who both emotionally fell head over heels for each other. They were a perfect match, and now married with a beautiful future together, everything seemed perfect. However, just out the blue, Abby disappeared, leaving behind a much loved and worried spouse. This case is shocking, and with that being said, let's get into it, shall we? Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Wherever you may be in the world right now, hello, my name's Lloyd, and you're watching When Evil Follows. Today's case takes us to Castleford, a popular town within the district of Wakefield, West Yorkshire, in England. Castleford has a growing population of around 60,500 people and is situated in Yorkshire, in the Humber County of West Yorkshire and just three miles northwest of Pontefract. Castleford has many tributing factors and it's also home to Escape, a family place with much to offer its visitors, including skiing, snowboarding and other cool family activities to participate in. With good employment rates, shops, parks, wine bars, a cute theatre house, and a race course with an average crime rating. Castleford really isn't a bad place to set up house and home. Abigail Elizabeth Richardson was born into a warm and loving family, and her relationship with her brother Nathan could only be described as a strong and positive one. Abby was also very close to both of her parents, Andre and Michael Richardson, who both completely adored her. Abby growing up was always gentle, kind, considerate and thoughtful. She loved spending time with her family and she enjoyed holiday adventures, movies and animals. She did great at school, she was popular with the other children and took a keen interest in all of her topics taken. And even though she was young, she always knew that she wanted to help other people when she became a little older. Now it was in her last year at school when Abby would meet a young boy called Matthew Fisher and the pair became quite close, and soon, they fell in love. Abby was such a positive young person, always drawing people in close to her, due to her smile and infectious personality. Now, Matthew and Abby would always be seen out together at family do's and at public events. They were a close pair, and they were very much in love with each other, and their emotional bond was very strong. Abby, by this point in her life, age 19, she knew that she wanted to become a teacher, and so she took steps forward in making that happen by attending the local university. And there at her side, as always, was Matthew. He took her out on date nights, and in doing so, he gave her emotional stability, and he was a real rock for her and supported her through her education. And now with university complete, Abby's future dreams and plans of becoming a teacher was now starting to take shape, perfectly. Now, Matthew found full-time employment for a caregiving company, and he enjoyed his role as a support worker. And as for Abby, her application for teaching was successful, and she soon found full-time employment teaching the year threes at a local school in Castleford. And in the year of 2014, Matthew knew what he wanted. He he knew that he wanted to spend the rest of his life with Abby. And so, uh, you know, um, he popped the magic question and proposed to Abby. And of course, she said yes. And with that, the pair wanting to keep things local, both decided to set up home and buy a cute house together in the middle of a working class estate on Walton Park Street in Castleford in West Yorkshire. Soon after, the loving and charming couple were to marry in the June of 2016, and marry they did. Their wedding day was perfect, and the event went beautifully. Abby really loved Matthew, emotionally, spiritually, and soulfully, and the pair were, as what people would describe as, the perfect couple. They, they were perfect for each other. However, the married couple would have a couple of problems in the old, um, <whistles> uh, department. And so after three rounds of IVF, Abby would soon find herself pregnant. And even though Abby really loved her job as a teacher, Abby took six months maternity leave. And rightly so. And not long after, hey ho, what do you know? Boom! 29-year-old Abigail Fisher 
gave birth to a beautiful baby girl named Sydney Quinn. The loving couple had big dreams and huge plans for Sydney, and both Matthew and Abby were now super excited for the future. However, just five days after Sydney Quinn's christening day, everything would change. On Saturday the 9th of July in the year of 2022, Matthew woke up around 8am in the morning. He went downstairs and put the kettle on and began to make himself a cup of coffee. He then walked into the front room, pulled open the curtains and then headed upstairs to carry baby Sydney down into the front room. And that's when he noticed Abby wasn't home. He was somewhat shocked and worried and so he, he rung her phone. But no luck. She, she didn't respond. She didn't answer. He then went onto her Facebook and left a public post on Abby's profile wall saying, Has anyone seen Abby? If you have, can you please let me know? Or get her to give me a ring. Now the comments came in thick and fast, sparking off a huge online search involving hundreds of friends, family members and local communities, building up to almost a thousand concerned followers. And yet, everyone who knew Abby hadn't seen her and nobody knew where she was. And with that, just two hours later, Matthew reported Abby to the police as missing. The police came around to the family home address and they took a statement from Matthew. And it was during this statement, Matthew mentioned that recently, Abby had been feeling very low, quite sad and quite depressed because she was due to return back to work after the weekend. Matthew also mentioned to the police that he and Abby spent the night in together watching movies and that they didn't go anywhere and that they never left the house and that they both stayed in together with the baby. And it was then Matthew broke down in tears in pure worry. Now those same police officers who took the statement from Matthew, they started talking to Abby's close friends and family, asking them all the same questions, things like, when did you last see Abby? Who was she with? What was she doing? Did she look well? Is there a specific place she might have gone to just to get away for a while? And at no point during the questioning did anybody turn around and say to the police, yeah, you know what? She's been quite depressed recently. Another thing that didn't quite add up was the fact that Abby had told everybody that she'd recently been talking to that she was much looking forward to returning back to work. And because of these strange discrepancies in people's statements given, the police started to look much closer at Matthew. And bear in mind, he was also the very last person to see her alive. That same day, but much later on in the evening, the police returned back to the Fisher's family home and Abby was still missing. The police then took a second statement from Matthew and seized his phone, as this was now a serious missing persons investigation and all devices capable of communication needed to be examined, or at least that was the impression given to Matthew. Detectives' work in this case would soon run Matthew's car registration information into the CCTV database. Matthew's phone was also retracked by GPS, and their findings were deeply disturbing. The detectives found on CCTV an identical vehicle with the same registration matching Matthew's car, driving down the motorway at 3am in the morning. The police also located Matthew's phone's last known GPS location, pinged from the Briley cell phone tower at around 4.45 in the morning and exactly 30 miles away from the Castleford family home. And it was just hours later, over 20 police officers with sniffer dogs would begin scouring that particular area. And guys, on the 10th of July at 6.30 in the evening, the police finally found Abby Fisher's lifeless half-naked body, just dumped in the undergrowth next to a busy main road in Briley, South Yorkshire. Hi, I'm Claire Lewis from The Star, and I'm reporting from Barnsley this afternoon, following the discovery of a body in the Briley area of the town yesterday. Although formal identification has yet to take place, police believe the body to be that of 29-year-old Abby Fisher. Abby, a teacher from Castleford in West Yorkshire, was last seen alive on Friday and had been reported missing. A murder investigation has now been launched and a 29-year-old man is in police custody this afternoon, being held on suspicion of murder. 
Matthew Fisher was immediately arrested under suspicion for Abby's murder, and it was during police interrogation interviews Matthew finally admitted to killing his wife. Yeah, he claimed they had an argument, a huge row, and without thinking in the heat of the moment, he lashed out and hit Abby in the head and accidentally killed her. Although the forensic team and the police pathologist had a completely different catalogue of clues and evidence which strongly suggests that Matthew was lying. Abby had internal and external bruising all over her body, including fractures to her skull and strangulation marks around her neck. These marks clearly show that Abby was indeed brutally beaten and then died from asphyxiation. And if anything, this was a very close up and personal killing. So what was the true motive behind Matthew's violent and murderous actions? Well, it certainly wasn't a spare of the moment feud as Matthew claimed. That's for sure. The police discovered just days before Abby went missing that she had actually made a couple of key searches on um, good old Google via her laptop. Yeah, she Google searched, why does my husband hate me? And is marriage counseling available on the NHS? And obviously this gives police a much bigger glimpse into Matthew and Abby's marriage. A marriage that was clearly strained and troubled, even at the best of times. In fact, ever since the birth of their daughter Sydney, the marriage had become emotionally difficult. And because of the constant arguing and fighting between the pair, Abby had had enough and told Matthew on the Friday evening just before she went missing that she didn't want to be with him anymore and that she was taking baby Sydney and moving back into her parents' house. And it was in the later hours of that same day, Matthew used heavy, multiple objects to strike and inflict maximum pain upon Abby. And then after strangling her to death, he then loaded up his half-naked wife's dead body into the back of his car and made the long drive via Derbyshire and Lancashire and then dumped her body in a wooded area on Southmoor Road near Briley in the early hours of the next day. Oh, and while he was driving around trying to find the perfect place to dispose of Abby's body, he left six-month-old Sydney at home rolling around on the kitchen floor for over four hours. He then returned home at around 5.30am. He put the baby back in her cot and then he went to bed as if nothing had happened. He woke up in the morning and the rest you already know, he reported Abby is missing. What a scumbag. His sentencing came on Thursday the 10th of November in the year of 2022 at Leeds Crown Court. Judge Justice Tom Baylor, after hearing all the evidence and reading police statements, he gave Matthew Fisher a life sentence with the minimum of 15 years to serve behind bars. So I think we can see by the number of people that have attended at court today um, to support Abby and her family um, that she was loved by many, truly loved by many by friends and family and um, by a community but also by the teachers that she worked with and the pupils uh, that were at school that have also been affected by this crime. The community has obviously been shocked and devastated by what Matthew Fisher did to Abby um, and his actions have left Abby's daughter um, with neither parent which is truly devastating. Nothing will ever be able to bring Abby back for her mother and father or any of her friends and family or the community. I do hope that the justice given today will give them small comfort. I know it is very small comfort. They would like to be um, given the opportunity and privacy now to grieve for Abby. And as for baby Sydney, she's now being cared for under the warm and loving safety of both of her grandparents, Andre and Michael Richardson. The Richardson family continue to be strong for their beautiful granddaughter, and they remain forever always missing Abby, but still stand strong and closer than ever. The Richardson family truly are a beautiful and an amazing family. Rest in love and peace, Abigail Elizabeth Richardson. <laughs> So there you go, one incredible disgusting human behind bars and that's exactly where he needs to be. And if you've enjoyed this video then please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. We upload both solved and unsolved crimes, supernatural events all based on hard evidence and facts right here on this channel every single week. So if that sounds like the kind of thing you're into, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell. That way you'll never miss out on any of our amazing up and coming videos just like this one. So what did you think to this case? 
Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you want to see more videos just like this one, here's two more videos guaranteed to keep you entertained. And as I always say, look after yourself, stay safe, and I'll see you again the next time when evil follows. Bye.